the world is getting smaller. Didn't quite catch that? I'll say it one more time. The world is shrinking. And no, this isn't at the hands of some mastermind or supervillain or genius. But it's at the hands of you and I. And in this case, the doomsday device we use is small, rectangular, and we carry it with us everywhere we go. It is because of this device that I can contact anybody, and I mean almost anybody, and have a conversation. I can call right now China, India, or even Alaska, and see what I can do. All I need to do is type in 10 random numbers, and hopefully I can talk to them. You see, society is getting smaller, because as these phones grow, and as our outreach grows further, the advents of things like social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have gained popularity. However, even with global outreach as far as it has ever been, and we can call almost anybody, modern generations can be summed up in five words. Let me take a selfie. <laughs> These five words describe the modern generation as easily as possible. And for those of you who don't know what a selfie is, a selfie is whenever you take a phone, you point it at a distance away from yourself, and you take a picture of yourself. Pose for me, let me take a selfie. The self-portrait has been around for hundreds of years. It's gained popularity and had kings and queens want them in their own houses. But now with technology as easy as it is to take a picture of yourself, the art museums that used to hold these self-portraits have become our Facebook walls. The display cases used to hold them are our Twitter feeds. And we take selfies on almost a daily basis for a very important reason. Because instead of trying to gain popularity, reign a city, or be a king or queen, we want to be accepted. We want to gain confidence by making sure that people like, comment, tweet, retweet, or favorite whatever we post. Next time you take a selfie, I want you to ask yourself a very important question. What would you do if you posted this and nobody liked it? There was not a single comment. You see, as our global outreach is going outwards, society is shrinking because our social circles, because of things like social media, are shrinking as well. I only want to contact my 300 closest friends. That's it. And because of this, it's hard to approach somebody. It's hard to talk to them in person. If it's not at a thing like a bar or a club, it's very difficult to go to somebody and say, hey, I want to have a conversation. So, societies become uneven. We're not quite sure how to do things like this if we're shy, if we're introverted, or just can't express ourselves. I'm here to fix that. I'm here to level the playing field. This is how to flirt in an uneven society. So, before we get started, let me tell you a bit about myself. There are only two things that I knew about myself growing up. <laughs> the first of which is that I hated strangers. I couldn't talk to anybody aside from friends and family friends, and that was about it. I mean, all the pictures I have of kindergarten and first grade are of me frowning and looking down at my little bowl cut because I didn't know what to do. Peer pressure and anxiety kind of seep into you. But second, is that I love suits. <laughs> That's my first suit, clip on tie and all. And some things never change. So as I got older, I found a hobby that let me wear a suit every weekend and travel around the United States. I became a debater. I went almost everywhere and gave public speeches and talked to strangers and kind of introduced myself. My short time as a debater really taught me a few things. We can sum them up in three. First, I learned how to be a speaker, how to talk to strangers, how to socialize. Second, I learned how to create and present an argument. But most importantly, I learned how to adjust to almost any social situation, because you never know what's going to come up next. But sometimes in life, when you think you're learning one thing, you can really be figuring out something else. That's what makes hobbies like this so important. I call it a fake out. Debate was my fake out. As I spent weekends suiting up and going to tournaments, I realized a few things. 
First was the value of camaraderie, the idea of a brotherhood and a team that has your back wherever you go. Second is the idea of anonymity, that nobody knew who I was, and I loved that, because every single stranger I met, I can shape the way they thought of me. And third, most importantly, I learned why I like suits so much, because the suits empowered me. They gave me the strength I needed to talk to strangers. I felt as if I was wearing a mask. But as time went on, the mask got smaller. I stopped suiting up so much, started wearing vests or sweaters, not even a tie or jeans. And it's something like this that taught me that it wasn't the suit that had the power, it was me. With my newfound confidence, I did what any 17, 18 year old would have done at the time and uh, I started flirting. I really started flirting. I walked to a bunch of strangers, wanted to get to know them, know things about them, maybe get their phone number, maybe not. All I really wanted to do was meet strangers. Suit on, suit off, it's all the same. But as time went by, people came to me. They wanted help. They wanted to know how to get with somebody they were interested in or how to maintain a consistent relationship. And as four to five years went by, I became a relationship consultant. I help individuals in achieving the goals they want to form a bond with somebody else effectively. And without further ado, let's get to work. These are the three things you can do to flirt with almost anybody. There are three basic steps. First, know your resume. Know exactly what you have to offer and how unique you can be. Second, know how to lead a conversation, how to steer someplace to where you want it to be so you can maintain confidence. And third, most importantly, make sure you know how to adapt because you have to be ready for almost anything when you're thrown on the front lines. So, step one, know your resume. Your resume is essentially what you have to offer and that can be divided in three things. It can be a list of hobbies, which is what you do in your free time, how you can interest that. It can also be interests like music and philosophy and cinematic arts and things like that, whatever you really enjoy, so maybe you can share it with somebody. But most importantly, it's stories. Because without a good story to tell, a lot of conversations can die immediately. So, here are a few tips. I want you, when you get home today, or even now, to take out a piece of paper, take out the note app on your iPad, and type down a few things. I want you to type down what makes you unique, what hobbies you do that nobody else can do, or even that other people have done to make you special, what interests you truly have a passion for, whether it be music, arts, movies, or flirting. It's all the same. And most importantly, I want you to type down your craziest childhood story that you can share with somebody, or a story in general, to make sure that you can keep the floor when you hit step number two leading the conversation. When you're speaking to a stranger, you need to make sure you can keep a common ground with them. And the best way to do that is to have confidence enough to control the conversation. You do this by asking the questions you want to be asked. Because after they're done answering, you have a chance to reciprocate. Whether it's granted to you, like, hey, I do dance and gymnastics, how about you? Or it's not, like, hey, I do dance and gymnastics. It's awkward. But you can fix that. And all you really need to do to fix it is know what to say immediately. Know the hobbies that you have to offer. But the best way to lead is to not lead all the way. One question you can ask to give somebody else the floor for a very long amount of time is, hey, what's your craziest story? This question, although it may seem very simple, has a few complex meanings to it. First, it gives the individual a subconscious need to impress you because they're digging through all their memories and trying to put on display the best possible one. Second, it gives you full control of the floor but lets them think that they have it because they're talking. But you're ready for the question to come back to you with a story that is a very interesting one from your childhood, from your current experience, from the past year, from college, wherever. And third, most importantly, it lets you know more about this person than you will ever figure out by knowing the fact that they played basketball as a kid. If you can tell someone's craziest story, and if it's really out there, you know that they're outgoing, that they're not shy, that maybe it's time to talk to them more, or bring the conversation elsewhere. 
Here are a few tips. When leading a conversation, make sure that you're back and forth with them. Maybe let them ask a few questions. Don't just take full control. Although this may give you confidence, what you want to do is make sure the lead shifts back and forth. Because when it does, that's called flirting. Second, make sure you can keep your body language upright. And I mean make eye contact, maybe you can mimic their body language and if they nod, you nod, or nod so they nod, because mimicking is very natural. And most importantly, remember to smile. And I don't mean smile, I mean be happy, be genuine, because a smile is more contagious than you think. It lets them know that you're truly enjoying yourself, that you're passionate about whatever you're speaking about, and that sometimes they might meet a genuine person every once in a while. The most important step is adaptation. And I mean the most important step is to be ready for almost anything. I want you to think two steps ahead of whatever they're going to say. Be ready for the next answer. Know your resume well enough to steer the conversation there without asking a question. Just know how to be confident in yourself enough to adapt to any situation. If the individual you're talking to is speaking in short bursts, if they're shy, if they're timid, work them further into the conversation. Maybe talk a little longer so they know more about you, and then give them more time. Talk to them. Ask them questions that you don't even want to know the answer to. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite foot? It's all the same. See, the most important part of adaptation is to make sure you don't fall into a pattern. Because even if I give you a three-step mechanism you can use to talk to almost anybody, you don't want to make it your crutch. Use it to boost your confidence, but not take over. But have you caught the fake out? This whole time, I'm talking about flirting, body language, and things like that. But this isn't only about flirting. This is about confidence. This is how to talk to almost anybody with almost any intent, whether romantic or not. So with that being said, let's go over this one more time. First, know your resume. Know what you have to offer. What you put on the table and what you can bring to somebody else. That helps in a romantic sense, but also in everything else, because you're trying to get your point across so they understand who you are through the lens that you want them to see you. Second, know how to lead a conversation and exchange the leads sometimes. Know how to make it friendly, a friendly conversation back and forth, and never be, to, never be afraid to talk to or flirt with somebody that you're already with. Flirting with your wife is probably the best thing you can do on a daily basis. You can ask her, she'll say almost the same thing. And third, Make sure you adapt, because I want you to be ready for almost anything. Because when talking to somebody, random things can happen, and you can throw a curveball into the mix. Be ready for it. The best piece of advice that I can offer you is that when you're trying to do this entire process to be confident, is to make it your own. Use your own style, your own speaking mechanisms, and the only way that you can convey yourself. Because each individual in here is unique, and only you truly know about yourself what is your own secrets. So because of this, make sure that you can speak to strangers with this specific mechanisms. So even if society is uneven, this levels the playing field. Thank you.